Hey everyone, welcome to part two of the TIFF video. Here's a bunch more things that I saw at the festival. The next film that I saw at the festival was the new Daniel Radcliffe film, Guns Akimbo. This may not have been the best film that I saw at the festival, but it was by far the most fun I had watching anything there. This thing was off the wall insane. Daniel Radcliffe and Samara Weaving especially were great in their roles. Samara Weaving is obviously having so much fun playing this film's antagonist. To give you the basic setup for it, it's pretty much about a guy that goes into a chat room for this online gambling site almost, where it's like a, a streamed deathmatch, and he starts trash talking the guys who are running it and calling them psychopaths, and one of them threatens him and tells him that he knows his address, he calls bullshit on him, the guy actually shows up to his house, knocks him out, and when he wakes up in the morning he has two guns literally bolted to his hands so he no longer has use of his hands, and then gets told that this woman, who's played by Samara Weaving, is going to be hunting him for the next 24 hours, and whichever one of them kills the other first gets to walk free. It sounds crazy, and it is crazy. This thing is kind of like Crank done on a lower budget. It's super tongue-in-cheek, it's super over-stylized, almost to this like level of something like Scott Pilgrim, where there's like cartoons popping into the frame and stuff like that. It's over-the-top violent, the language is ridiculous, there's so many stupid jokes throughout this thing, there's an entire gag about Daniel Radcliffe trying to take a piss while not having use of his hands and trying not to shoot his own dick off. It is hilarious, it is ridiculous, it's probably not going to work for everybody because it's going to come off as edgy and try hard to a lot of people, but I thought it was a blast. I thought the action sequences were extremely well done and extremely engaging. I was never bored at any point in this thing. I think the opening 30 minutes are probably the strongest bit of it, and the ending I might fizzle out a little bit compared to the rest of it, but it still maintains that same level of fun throughout. I'd really highly recommend checking this one out when you get a chance. I don't know if it's going to come out late 2019 or early 2020, but either way, Definitely see it. Samara Weaving is quickly becoming one of my favorite genre actors in anything with this in Ready or Not. She is awesome, and I can't wait to see what else she'll be in. I'd give this one a solid 8 out of 10. Up next at the festival, I saw Motherless Brooklyn, which is Edward Norton's directorial debut, I believe, and he also plays the main character in this one. But this was sort of a throwback, like, classic noir about a guy with Tourette's who's trying to investigate the death of a friend. And it was an interesting setup, but it has a lot of problems, the main one being that the movie's way too long. It's almost two and a half hours long, and I think it would make a really solid like 95, 100 minute movie. So you could probably cut a huge chunk of it out and it would still have the same effect regardless. The performances were really hit and miss. Edward Norton was actually pretty good, he didn't make the Tourette's laughable at all, he managed to make them somewhat believable. But unfortunately some of the other performances were laughable. Bruce Willis was kind of phoning it in, as he usually does now. Alec Baldwin particularly just seemed off. I don't know what he was doing, but he's supposed to be playing a politician and he kind of did his Donald Trump impersonation the entire time because I guess he's been trained into that as being what a politician is. So every time he was speaking on screen, even if it was a completely serious patch of dialogue, my whole theater was snickering laughing, and I don't think that was the intended effect. It, it nailed the, the aesthetic that it was going for, it did feel like an old noir film. The s visuals are actually pretty good for a debut especially. The art direction's great, all the cars and costumes and stuff like that are really interesting. But yeah, there's some really rocky acting and it's way, way too long and the score can be overbearing at points. But it's worth mentioning that there's a new Tom York song in there and it's awesome, because anytime Tom York does something it's great. But apart from that, this one's kind of a mixed bag. It's not bad. It's not particularly great either. I guess check it out if you're particularly interested. The trailer's a pretty good depiction of what the movie actually is, except it's much longer. I'd give this one a solid, like, 6.5 out of 10. Up next, I saw another one of my most anticipated ones at the festival, the new Trey Edward Schultz film, Waves. And if you aren't familiar with him as a director, I highly recommend seeing Cretia and It Comes at Night. Both of them are great, great drama films. It Comes at Night is kind of a drama horror, but it's super effective. Uh, Waves, on the other hand, is more of a standard family drama. Schultz tends to focus his films around very intense familial situations, and this one is no exception. It's definitely tense. It's very unpredictable. I don't really know how to talk about it without spoiling anything about it, because the plot weaves so much and it ties almost like two different narratives together and I guess that's where my complaint major complaint comes in with this one and that is that the second half of the film kind of felt like a different movie but not as good of a movie and that's not to say it's bad because it's not this is great regardless but unfortunately the first hour or so is just so good that the second hour couldn't really live up to it 
Like, I'm not even kidding, the first hour of this film was leaning toward me giving it a 10 out of 10. It is incredibly well made, performances are extremely strong across the board, the visuals are great, there's tons of good uses of music, it felt like just very honest and very personal. And then, without spoiling exactly what happens in the plot, I'll just say everything after when the aspect ratio change happens kind of didn't work as well for me. It still worked, but it didn't hit the emotional beats that I think it was trying to hit, for me at least. Regardless, I think this is a film that a lot of people are going to fall in love with. Like I said, it's beautiful, the music's great. I'm sure the ending is going to affect a lot of people in an emotional way, it just unfortunately didn't for me. But I still overall think this was great. Like I said, I just preferred the first half over the second half. Uh, overall, I'd still give it a high rating, though I'd still give it like a solid 8 out of 10. The next film that I saw at the festival is another one that I'm going to have a tricky time talking about without spoiling it, and that was the new Pablo Lorraine film, Emma. I really wanted to see this one because I loved Lorraine's film, Jackie, and I didn't think this one was quite at that level, but it was still very well made, very stylized, beautiful shot composition, some really interesting dance choreography, basic plot synopsis, it follows a dancer and her husband who is sort of like a dance coordinator and it's just about their relationship that's kind of on the rocks because of something that their child did. Uh, I don't want to specify what, because that's what the entire plot focuses around, but it's it, it surrounds them trying to be better parents, but also kind of being terrible people, and their relationship just being on the rocks constantly. They're always getting into fights, they're cheating on each other. There's a bunch of stuff that happens in this movie. Uh, it kind of felt... A little all over the place and a bit fractured at first and I was a bit confused where it was going but then luckily at the end it kind of tied itself together nicely it just took a while to get there overall I really liked this one though like I said I don't really think I can go too much more in depth than that I'll just say I really like the score really like the visuals really like the dance choreography and I really like the ending so yeah I would recommend it. it wasn't exactly one of my favorites at the festival but it's definitely a very well made film and I'll still be seeing anything that Lorraine makes next. Uh, I'll give this one a solid 7 out of 10. The next film that I saw at the festival was another one of my most anticipated ones, and that was the movie that Shia LaBeouf actually wrote loosely based on his own life called Honey Boy. And uh, it's probably going to spoil my rating right off the bat, but this was my favorite film that I saw at the entire festival. This is currently number two for the entire year of 2019 for me. I thought this thing was incredible. I haven't been emotionally moved by a movie like this in so goddamn long. Everything about it just felt so personal, and I think it is very personal. The film is based on Shia LaBeouf's life and his abusive relationship with his own father and how he ended up kind of messed up, and because of that, what he ended up doing is casting Lucas Hedges to play him as a young adult and then casted Noah Jupe to play him as a child and in the childhood sequences uh, he actually plays his own father which is a character that he's very familiar with and you can just feel how personal this is and how this is sort of a form of therapy for him to let this all out. Uh, his performance is fucking incredible. I really want him to get an Oscar nomination for supporting actor because he's just so goddamn good and he's so underappreciated in movies now. On a technical level, this thing is amazing. It is beautifully shot, there's tons of color, the score was immediately memorable, and yeah, the biggest benefit that this thing had was just that it moved me in such a way. Like, the last 30 minutes, I was pretty much glassy-eyed the entire time, and I even went back and watched the trailer afterward, and watching the trailer after seeing the movie, watching some of those scenes again, it was kind of starting to get to me again without even watching the movie again, so... This one really affected me personally, and I don't know if it will with everyone, I know film is a subjective medium obviously, but this is the one that I recommend the highest out of everything that I saw at the festival. I think it's proof of what I've been saying all along, that LaBeouf is a fantastic actor, and I can't wait to see what else this director is going to do next, because this is such a promising film. Uh, highly, highly recommend it, this is like my must-see pick of the entire festival, this one and not cut gems. Uh, this is the only one that I'm going to give this rating to in this entire video, but uh, this one's a solid 10 out of 10 for me. The next film that I saw at the festival was also one of my most anticipated films at the festival, and that was the new Noah Hawley movie, starring Natalie Portman, Lucy in the Sky, and unfortunately, this one was a huge disappointment. A lot of people really fucking hate this movie. I wasn't exactly on the hate train, but... I definitely had a lot of problems with it and I found it super disappointing. Portman's performance is actually really good. She's like the one standout, like, good thing in the movie. 
everything else is a mess though. I, I think the reason why I didn't actually hate the movie was because I was still glued to her performance. Without her this would have been kind of trash, because narratively it completely gets lost after the first 20 or 30 minutes, which are actually a solid start, and then it just went completely off the rails, it went in a totally different direction, the ending was just bizarre and not in a good way. Some of the performances were really iffy, there's some really strange uses of comedy throughout it. I don't know whether Noah Hawley just figured out how aspect ratio changes worked, but he was constantly changing the aspect ratio throughout this and it was starting to piss me off. There was literally one shot where for no reason the aspect ratio was only the left half of the screen, that's all you're shown and then it just slides over to the right for the other half of the scene, but there's no motivation for it. That's what was annoying me about it, was I've seen a lot of movies use aspect ratio changes effectively. A uh, perfect example being Waves, which I talked about earlier in this video. But in this one, it had no purpose. It just felt like they were doing it for a stylistic choice, and it changed literally once every five minutes. I'm not even joking. It happened so much that it became distracting, and the theater started laughing at it. As you can tell, I'm getting kind of fired up talking about this one. I haven't even mentioned the plot, but pretty much it follows a woman who goes to space, comes back, and then can't return to normal life because she's already seen everything that's above her. Uh, it's an interesting setup, but it kind of just goes nowhere. Like, it's kind of an empty mess, and I really wanted this to be good, and unfortunately it's not. If you're going to pick one space movie to see this year, I'd recommend seeing Ad Astra instead because it's much better. Uh, I don't really know what else I can say about this one. Didn't particularly like it. Didn't also hate it as much as a lot of people, but... Yeah, I don't know. 5 out of 10. I hope Noah Holly makes something else, and I hope it's better. Up next at the festival was the new Justin Kurtzel flick, True History of the Kelly Gang. Uh, I was really excited for this one, even though Kurtzel directed Assassin's Creed, I didn't blame that on him. Uh, but I did see Macbeth recently, which he directed, which was awesome. So because of that, I was hoping this one would be more Macbeth than Assassin's Creed, and luckily it was. This was one of the most visually interesting films that I saw at the festival. I guess before I get into explaining all that stuff, I should explain the plot. This one pretty much was a... It's based on, I think it's an Australian or Irish gang. Uh, Ned Kelly, the famous gangster over there. It follows him and just like his rise up to, I guess, minor power that he had and how his gang became this influential group of outlaws. And uh, it was a really fascinating story, actually. And it's kind of split into sort of two separate chunks, one of him as a child and one of him as an adult. Uh, I found the adult chunk more interesting because I thought the lead performance was fantastic. The child bit was still good though and Charlie Hunnam was actually quite good as the sort of villain character in that chunk. Russell Crowe was great in his supporting role. George McKay, like I said, the lead actor in the adult part was awesome. And yeah, this one was just very, very well made. And like I mentioned earlier, visuals, uh, really interesting, super experimental at points actually, which was surprising considering it's a gangster flick. There's a shootout at one point that uses a heavy strobe and blacklight effect where the people that are being shot at are actually glowing in the dark and you'd think that would get distracting but it oddly worked. And there was also some uses of music like using modern punk music even though it was taking place a long time ago and stuff like that but somehow that didn't distract me. It kind of worked for the grungy tone this was going for. It felt almost like a punk rock retelling of that story and a much more dramatized version of it. Uh, but yeah, I really, really like this one. I don't think it's going to be everyone's cup of tea. It's a little over-stylized, it's a little slow, but for me it really, really worked, and uh, I'd give this one an 8 out of 10. The next film that I saw at the festival was kind of a random pickup. Uh, I didn't really know much about it, but it was a film called The Vast of Night. And basic plot synopsis without, go without going into spoiler territory about this one, it followed uh, two kids who sort of run a radio station and pick up a weird signal one night, and they start to become convinced that it might be alien in nature. I don't want to explain anything more than that, because this had a really fascinating plot and the way it unfolded was really, really cool. It was totally unpredictable. I loved how this thing managed to tell its entire story, barely showing anything. It kind of reminded me of like Blair Witch Project kind of thing, where everything is implied or done through audio, and it's super, super effective. It's very unnerving, very creepy. Uh, I wouldn't exactly call it a horror film, but it is very tense. It's just a, a low-budget sci-fi slash horror, I guess. It's really impressive though, considering it's low-budget. There's one really cool single-take shot early on that seems to go from one end of the city to the other, which I'm sure was CGI'd in post, but it, it works very well and it's quite seamless. The performances were great, especially the lead actor, using all the, the 1950s slang or whatever that was supposed to be taking place. It was all very believable. Yeah, I really, really liked this one. I don't really know what I can say about it. This is another one of those ones where I don't want to spoil it in any way. 
But yeah, just know that it's kind of an alien movie, and it's done a lot through the uh, audio rather than visual, which is a unique take. And I really like this one. I'd give it a solid 7.5 out of 10. Next up at the festival, I saw the new Moorhead and Benson film, Synchronic. And this one I was really excited for because I loved The Endless and I loved Spring. So I had high hopes for this one and luckily it delivered. This is another one where I can't really say much about it because the plot is so reliant on you not knowing about it and there's no trailers there for it yet, but I really hope they don't spoil what the main plot element of this movie is. All I'm gonna tell you is that it follows two paramedics who are going around over a series of a couple days and they keep finding these deaths that have all been linked to the same drug called Synchronic and the movie is sort of unraveling the mystery around what this drug is and why people seem to die when they take it and it is not what you think at all. There is a big reveal about 30 minutes in that totally takes the plot in a different direction and it works so well for me and this thing was just wildly original. I haven't really seen anything with a plot quite like this ever. Uh, it totally stands out. It's totally a Moorhead and Benson film. If you like their other stuff, it's stylized in the exact same way. The camera work is beautiful. Everything has this like orange shade over it that I loved. It's just really cool, really unpredictable. And the acting's all good, so I'd highly recommend checking this one out whenever it opens. I'd give it a solid 8 out of 10. The next film I saw at the festival was the new Takashi Miike film, First Love, and this movie was crazy. Besides Guns Akimbo, this was probably the most off-the-wall, insane thing that I saw at the festival. I don't even really know how to explain it, because you kind of have to see it to believe it, but pretty much this was like a gangster film that had multiple narratives going on, they all collided, it got real weird and real violent, and it was hilarious, and it was over the top. Uh, the performances were all great. The story, I don't really even know how I talk about it because it's just so bonkers and outlandish. But it's just a lot of fun to watch. It's it's pretty much about a boxer that gets tied up with a bunch of mobsters based on a woman he interacts with. Uh, that's the basic thing, but then it gets way crazier from there. This one was a lot of fun. If you're a fan of Mike's other work, you're 100% gonna love this, and I think this might actually be a good introduction to his style. It's much more accessible than a lot of his movies are, and it's also much less, like, fucked up than a lot of his movies are. It's still violent, but it's violent in, like, a fun way, if that makes any sense. This one was just a blast. I, I don't really know if I can go in depth on it at all, but I'd still highly recommend it. Uh, I'd give it a solid 7 out of 10. The next film that I saw at the festival was the new Terrence Malick film, A Hidden Life. And I wasn't as crazy about this one as a lot of people were. Um... Biggest issue right off the bat, this thing was way too friggin' long. It's almost three hours long, and I think it would have had the same emotional punch if it was two hours. It's still a Malick film, so it's still gorgeous, and the usage of narration and stuff like that is very poetic, so are a lot of the visuals. It all ties together really nicely. It actually is a very interesting story, I just think it's stretched a little too long. But yeah, I do think it's one of Malick's better films. I've never been the biggest fan of him, but I do love his movies on a visual level, which was the main reason I saw this, and it definitely delivered in that regard. Acting wise, everyone was really good. Uh, there was one specific supporting character, I can't remember his actual name, but I'll flash the IMDb thing up right now, but he was also in uh, Transit, and he was great in this. Every actor was actually, even the ones who only had like two or three minutes of screen time. So, Malik obviously knows how to direct his actors. I've noticed that in all of his movies, even if I don't really care for them. But yeah, this movie pretty much follows a Austrian guy who refuses to swear allegiance to Hitler and ends up imprisoned for the rest of his life because of that. And I don't want to spoil what happens to him. I believe the film's loosely based on a true story. It's quite a sad and long and uncomfortable movie to watch. But it is very well done, and I'm sure some people, especially if you're a Malick fan, you're gonna love this movie, but it just it didn't do much for me apart from the technical aspects and the good acting. So it's one of those movies where I can look at it and say it's definitely a good movie, it's just not my cup of tea at all. And because of that I'm only going to give it a 7 out of 10. The second last film that I saw at the entire festival was the new film from the director of Your Name, uh, Weathering With You. Uh, I adored Your Name, which was the main reason why I wanted to see this, and I really enjoyed this one as well. I don't think it's quite on the same level, and I think regardless, because of how big of a hit Your Name was, this one is going to get compared to it, even though it's a totally different movie. Some aspects of it are really similar, though. The visuals are absolutely amazing. This is some of the best animated stuff that I've ever seen in my entire life. Everything just pops off the screen. There's these beautiful flourishes of color. There's points where the movie kind of turns into like almost like a... Japanese music video 
and it's gorgeous and totally enthralling. It sort of follows a, a woman who realizes she has the ability to control weather with her mind or by praying. And without spoiling where the plot goes, that sort of the main character meets this girl and decides to start up a business with her where they control weather. And this movie actually packed quite the emotional punch toward the end, which I wasn't really surprised about because Your Name did as well. Um, but yeah, this one really got to me. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, the soundtrack and the, the voice acting and the visuals are all incredible. And if you liked Your Name, you're absolutely going to like it. Even if you're not big into anime at all, I'd still recommend watching this because I think it's a super accessible story and I think it will be emotionally moving to a lot of people. Uh, it was one of my favorites that I saw at the festival for sure. I'm going to give it a solid 8.5, possibly a 9 on a rewatch. The final film that I saw at TIFF 2019 was Radioactive, which was the new film starring Rosamund Pike and it follows the story of Marie Curie and the invention, or not invention, but discovery of the idea of radioactivity. It was a really interesting story, I didn't really know much about it, uh, but it's pretty much about how they discover two new elements and how those two new elements are used in sciences, and the movie sort of cuts in these little sequences of uh, showing the positives and negatives of them discovering like radioactivity and how that leads to, you know, atomic bombs, but how it also leads to cancer research, so it has these both positive and negative impacts that they don't know that it's going to have on the world. And I thought that was an interesting layout, but honestly, the least interesting part of the movie to me was the cutting back and forth. The actual story in the past is the meat of the movie, and it's the important part. And those cuts forward, even though they were an interesting touch, I don't think they were necessary. Because I do think the story was interesting enough on its own. Unfortunately, it's a little slow, and it definitely gets boring at points. Rosamund Pike was good, though. But it's definitely got issues, like I said, it's slow, uh, the old age makeup was a little questionable, um, didn't quite look convincing, and the music was used weirdly at a lot of points, and the ending particularly felt very strange and very abrupt. But apart from that, this was pretty well made. On a technical level, it's friggin' gorgeous to look at. Uh, it had some of the best cinematography at the entire festival. Um, it, like, I don't know who the cinematographer for it was, I'll have to flash the right be on screen right now, but they did a fantastic job because they managed to make even the most boring environment look interesting. If you watch the trailer for it, you can already tell. It's got this very interesting color palette that's going on the entire time, and it just makes everything very presentable and very interesting, even if the narrative's not necessarily always interesting. I, I guess I'd recommend it. It's definitely not one of the best things that I saw, but it's definitely not one of the worst either. It's well made, and I think a lot of- there are some people out there that are probably gonna really really like it, especially if you're very familiar with the subject, it may mean more to you. Um, I didn't find it emotionally moving at all, but I did find the story itself interesting. Like I said, I just wish they kind of didn't do the cutting back and forth thing and maybe just focus the story a bit more. But yeah, I don't know. Overall, I liked it. It was alright. Solid 6.5 out of 10. So yeah, that's everything I saw at the 2019 Toronto International Film Festival. There was a couple that I wasn't particularly fond of, but I'd still consider this a pretty good year for me. Uh, thank you so much for watching everybody, I'll leave my letterbox and Twitter down below like usual, and I'll catch you guys on the next time I upload, whenever that is.